Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video, we'll get our first hands-on experience using R. For the most part of this video, we'll discuss assigning values to objects in R, basic arithmetic functions, and a few other handy things to know when getting started with R. First, we can assign a value to an object in R using the equal sign. Let's create an object called x and store in it the value 11. If we would like to see what's stored in an object, we can ask R to print that object, or we may simply type the name of the object itself. You should note that R is case sensitive. We can see if we type capital X, R returns an error message letting us know there is no object capital X stored in R's memory. Instead of using the equal sign to assign values to objects, we may also use the less than sign and a dash to create an arrow. Here we'll assign the value 7 to the object y. The choice to use the equal sign or the arrow is simply a matter of preference and usually the one that one chooses to use really is just an artifact of which one they learned first. I prefer using the arrow but that's just my own personal choice. R will easily overwrite objects. For example, if we try and assign the value 9 to y, the object y now has a value of 9, and the value of 7 has been overwritten. To see what is stored in R's memory, or in the workspace, we can take a look up here at the workspace in R, or we may use the ls command to ask R to let us know everything that's stored in the workspace memory. We may remove an object from the workspace memory using the rm command. Here let's remove y from r's memory. We can now see the object y is not found. Now let's just go back ahead and store the value 9 and y because we're going to come back to using this later. Object names in r may include numbers or periods, for example x.1 is equal to, say, 14. Although, the number may not appear as the first character in the object's name. For example, if we try and assign a value of 22 to the object 1x, we'll see we're returned an error message. We may also assign character values to objects in R rather than numbers. We can do this by including quotation marks around the characters. For example, let's create an object xx and we'll assign to it the characters Marin. We can now see these characters are stored in the object xx. It's worth noting that if we include numbers in quotations in R, R will treat these as characters and not numeric when performing operations on them. For example, if we assign the value in quotations 1 to the object yy, r will treat yy as a character, not as a number. We may perform arithmetic operations in r, for example, 11 plus 14 is 25. 7 times 9 is 63. We may also perform these same operations on objects in r. Recall that we had stored the value 11 in the object x and the value 9 in the object y. We can add x and y together using the addition sign. We may wish to store this in a new object called z. Similarly, we can subtract y from x. We can multiply x and y or we can divide x divided by y. We can also perform other arithmetic operations. For example, we can square y. We can take x squared and add this to y squared. We can take the square root of y using the sqrt command or we may simply take y 
and raise it to the power of a half. We can take the natural logarithm, or ln, using the log command. We can take the exponent of y, that is the antilog, using the exp command. We can also calculate logs of other bases, for example, log base 2, using the log 2 command. We can calculate the absolute value using the abs command. Here, the absolute value of negative 14 is 14. We'll end off this video by mentioning a few helpful things to know in R. The first is that if you've entered an incomplete command, R will follow that up with a plus sign, letting you know there is an incomplete command. We can see if we don't complete this, R will still give us a plus sign. Once we add the close parentheses to end this command, R will now return the square root of Y to us. A second thing worth knowing is a very handy shortcut. Using the arrow up key on the keyboard will bring you to the last command that was entered in R. Hitting the arrow key up again will bring you to the previously entered command, and so on. We can see every time we hit the arrow up key, this brings us to the previously entered command in R. We can hit the arrow down key to move forward in the commands that have been entered. Finally, one may want to include some writing or comments within their code to remind themselves of why they entered certain code when looking through things later on. For example, you might want to have the code below is for dot dot dot. So when you look back on this code a month later, you can remember why you are entering certain things. You'll notice that R gives us an error here. It doesn't recognize this as being a command. Including the number sign or a hash in front of this will let R know to ignore everything that follows after the number sign or the hash. This will become useful as you start to write more lengthy code and want to be able to include notes reminding you what you did in this code. In the next video, we'll discuss creating vectors and matrices and performing some operations on these. Thanks for watching this video and make sure to check out my other instructional videos.